And a two, and a three. Greetings. From Troop 1983, from our virtual camp. Stay safe and healthy. Yay. All right, but the people. Good morning. It is good to see everybody. Uh, those were our, that was our scout troops, the uh, 1983 girls troop and 1983 boys troop welcoming you to our morning worship as they continue to, to gather in, in different ways. They did a virtual, uh, the boys troop did a virtual camp out a couple of weeks ago. Um, 
several things before we get start. Uh, if you are on Facebook, we invite you to tell others, host a, a watch party, and uh, tell your friends. Certainly a like us, cl click that, that's that helpful, that boosts our rating, makes us a little more prominent so other people can find us. Also helps us see who's watching and paying attention, although I see on the chat, uh, 23 folks, and um, I see some uh, lot, lots, lots, of, lots of familiar names and faces, and some not so familiar, and that's, that's wonderful. I'm glad we can reach out in this way. Uh, we do have our other small groups meeting. Our uh, John Caldwell Sunday School class will meet at uh, 930 on Zoom. Uh, the links are in the uh, shout if you get our weekly email blast. Um, our Sunday evening group is meeting as well. Our Wednesday morning is not meeting this week. Just, just so you know, we are not meeting this week. I have a district meeting talking about, well, talking about this 53-page document we just got on Embrace the Now, Prepare for the Next, A Plan for Resuming In-Person Worship in the Virginia Conference in Stages. Um, obviously, we're still processing this. We'll be talking about this as it applies to Vail. But what I want to say is that the earliest, absolute earliest, we would be uh, resuming any sort of in-person worship with a lot of restrictions at best, yes, I'm being very cagey here, would be July. I just want you to hear that. Uh, July at the earliest, most district, or a lot of district churches are saying they're not even going to go into maybe the end of August and, and, and possibly early September. So um, I know you've seen other things. I know the, the, the state is opening up a little bit more. Uh, churches outside of Northern Virginia are opening up a little bit more, but we're still in a region that's um, not as safe. So we want to be very cautious. You know, John Wesley's first rule was do no harm. And, and we certainly don't want to be a place where somebody caught this virus and, and died from it or got seriously ill. So uh, we're being careful, uh, but we are discussing it, processing it. We're looking at what that might look like and how we could implement uh, these things. So keep us in our keep us in your prayers as we as we search through this and find ways to be in community together. If you are on Zoom. Uh, I invite you to stick around afterwards. We're having a virtual coffee hour, just chatting. Nothing, nothing, nothing fancy. Just uh, you know, having a mug of your favorite, and this ought to keep, this ought to get me through that. And just touching, you know, touching each other's lives in in some way. Um, Facebook, of course, there's uh, always room to chat and message each other. Um, maybe you saw the announcement, but but we have these yard signs. Sorry, I got to hold it this way. Um, these fit in your yard on those little real estate, you know, type things. If you would like one of these for your yard, send me an email, pastor at valechurch.org, and um, I or somebody else would be happy to dr drop them off. We'll stick them in your yard. If you want to move it, that's fine, but but that'll get it that'll get it to you. Uh, so send your name and your address, please, uh, in case we don't have it. Uh, of your name, your address, not somebody else's, and we would love to do that. Uh, this morning, our uh, guest preacher is uh, Reverend Sarah Calvert. You you know her. She's preached at Vail before, and uh, she is our district superintendent. And she graciously has offered uh, this this sermon, this message, uh, to all the district churches, so that we can uh, we pastors get a little bit of a rest, and 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 we certainly welcome that. But also for you to hear something from 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 our our church leadership and to be guided and touched by them. So. Let us go forth in worship as Norm leads us in a wonderful prelude. Uh, and by the way, Norm, Norm is the genius behind all the videos you see. Uh, he and his family uh, take those videos and add uh, pictures. A lot of those pictures are ones we've taken. Uh, I mean, we as a community, they have taken uh, as part of that. And, and we certainly thank them for their creativity, especially in their music. Let us worship. Good morning, welcome to worship. My name is Sarah Calvert. I'm your district superintendent, and I want to welcome you to worship in ways that we never imagined. Worship in ways like out here in my neighborhood next to my favorite tree. I want to welcome you to worship like you maybe never imagined before, whether you're in your pajamas or you're having a cup of coffee or you're up and ready and have already been out for a run. Wherever you are, there is God. There is your community. There is a time for worship. So I call you into a time of community and worship this morning. May you be blessed. May you be enriched. May you be made more fruitful and go back out into the world. Amen.
Amen. We hear now our call to worship. Please join us for our call to worship this morning. The Lord has been our refuge and our keeper. Let our thanks and praise resound throughout this place of worship. Open your hearts and spirits to God this day. Lord, be with us and place your hand of healing in our lives. Amen. Our hymn is How Can We Name a Love?
join us now for the prayer of confession. Brothers and sisters, God not only asks us to repent, but also assures us of forgiveness. Therefore, let us confess our sins to the one who is steadfast love. Loving God, we do not always keep your commandments. We fail to love you. Our conscience is not clear. Wash us in the water of life so that we may live again through the grace and mercy of Jesus, our resurrected Savior. Amen. Brothers and sisters, know that God forgives, restores, and strengthens us through the risen Christ. Know that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. And now some wonderful banjo music by Warren. Good morning, everybody. Um, I wanted to update you on behalf of the Missions Committee on some of the outreach programs we've been able to continue, albeit a little bit more remotely and differently than we have in the past. Uh, the first is that we were able to meet some needs at Embry Rucker Shelter uh, in Reston to by donating uh, non perishable foods uh, that they could use and even gathering enough that they could have. Uh, uh, the right ingredients to prepare a single meal for all 60 individuals being served there. Uh, we also were able to purchase our giant uh, dollar cards out of the missions budget and donate those to Facets and to Southeast DC Ministry. Um, importantly, uh, the Rise Against Hunger program, uh, good news on that front is that those meals that were packaged in January have now all been sent to Tanzania, so uh, your hard work has paid off in that way. Neighbors Feeding Neighbors is still working hard to make some uh, deliveries of foods for children uh, at Waples Mill Elementary School, and some non-perishables have been sent over to Community of Faith for their food outreach. So um, things are going on, um, not in the same way, but, but relatively effectively, I think, at this time. Uh, we did identify one need that if you're interested would be to um, be in touch with the Sh uh, Shepherd Center and become a friendly caller for individuals who are perhaps lonely and would enjoy having a phone call from a friendly uh, uh, face. So uh, thank you for your time and thank you for your support of missions. We always appreciate your time or donations for our outreach programs. Have a wonderful day. I just want to add, add to that. Thank you, Linda, for putting that together. Um, the Shepherd Center of Vienna, SCOV, is looking for volunteers to be friendly callers. You can do that. That's not that hard to do, and, and you can really do it as, as uh, on your time 
as your time allows. Um, certainly invite you to do that. We, of course, here at Vera always look for volunteers to help us with our videos, with, um, with uh, our worship videos and or our music gifts. So um, think about what you can do to, to, to help make this better. And now we listen to our scripture reading from, first, from John 14, 15 through 21. This morning's scripture comes from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Today I have with me pictures of popular friends or sidekicks. Maybe you know some of them. Here is Donkey and Shrek. Buzz and Woody. I even have SpongeBob and Patrick. What makes for a good friend or sidekick? Well, I think a good sidekick or friend helps you on life's journeys. A good sidekick is a trusted ally or companion. They make life more manageable and fun. They're by your side no matter what, when times are good, bad, or indifferent. A good friend or sidekick supports you and your sometimes crazy ideas. They inspire you and they help us to think outside of the box and try something new or different. They're loyal and dedicated. Sometimes it can be hard to imagine life without them. I don't know about you, but I cannot imagine Shrek without Donkey. Do you know the Bible talks about someone in our life that can be and do all that for you? Do you know who it is? It's the Holy Spirit. In today's scripture reading, Jesus promised that even though he was going back to heaven and things would be very different and scary for his disciples, that the Holy Spirit would be here with us and in us. The Holy Spirit is our helper and our comforter. When we are sad, lonely, or struggling with something, the Holy Spirit is here to help us through those rough times. So the next time something bad or sad happens, don't be discouraged. Know that you're not alone and that things will get better in time. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is a faithful and knowledgeable prayer partner? He is. He never stops praying for you. He even helps you pray. The Holy Spirit is there to give us wisdom. He helps us understand the happenings of life and he helps us to understand the Bible when we read its words and think on them. So you see, the Holy Spirit is much greater than any friend or sidekick. He abides with us forever. He won't ever leave us. He'll be there with us through thick and thin, through our ups and downs, and he makes us stronger in mind and in heart. And in the same way Woody has a friend in Buzz, we have a friend in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your gift of the Holy Spirit. Help us to lean into its strength when we're struggling. Lord God, we love you and we thank you for all that you've given us. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. 
Thank you, Melissa. And now, from uh, Reverend Sarah Calvert, our district superintendent. Good morning, my name is Sarah Calvert. I'm your district superintendent for the Arlington District. And I'm here this morning because I'm trying to help out some pastors and giving them a rest, uh, giving them a, a chance to step away from sermon writing for at least a week. They have completely reinvented worship and sermons and technical ways of doing uh, worship and Bible studies and, and programming. They have been very, very hard at work for the last several months and I hope this gives them a bit of a breather. So I told them I would come and tell you a, uh, a little bit about what it means to be in the midst of this crisis, maybe in my life a little bit. So every day in the midst of this, I am walking my dog. This is my neighborhood. And in the walking of my dog, I come across this lovely tree. This lovely tree with the wind blowing through it. It's stable. You know, the, the leaves are flexible and they move, but it's rooted very deeply and very strongly. And so it's not going anywhere. It's a very old tree. It's got a lot of character to it. And it's a touch point for me. It's a time to stop and take a deep breath to remind myself that ways that I am rooted, the things I am rooted in, determine how well I can move forward. How well can I move through the fears and the anxiety, the anger and the worry that is going on in our world right now. The trees are very important. And they're very interesting. I was, uh, last summer I spent some time studying uh, a book called The Secret Life of Trees, where it talks about how trees are in community in ways we don't even know. Their roots reach out, even a solo looking tree like this, their roots reach out and talk to the other trees. Um, their branches and their leaves and even the way they, they disperse pollen um, all have chemical traces that talk to each other, even across um, different types of trees. And the trees themselves are, are um, a community. They are not standing isolated and alone. So though it may be rooted to one spot, it is actually part of a, a bigger whole. That helps me to, to think through the fact that even though I'm isolated at home, even though I'm fearful or, or angry, I am part of a larger community. I am part of a church. I am part, for me, a part of a, many churches in, in a whole district. And in the midst of that, I am reminded I am never alone. So what, what have I rooted myself in? Well, I know that I have comfort and strength for the road ahead because I've studied what's going on. I've been careful. I've um, uh, read up on things. And I know that I'm prepared. And when I think about this scripture that we're reading today, this passage from John, uh, you may realize that it is part of the uh, long passages where Jesus is trying to prepare his disciples for what's about to come. He's preparing them for the fact that their life is about to be turned upside down. They're about to be afraid and anxious and unstable. They're going to be hunted. They're going to run away. They're going to deny. They're going to do all sorts of things that mean that they are, in fact, not going to be in the place of the comfortable spot that they are right now. And when they do that, Jesus is going to say to them, look, if you love me, if you love me, then, then follow my commandment. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, you may be wondering, what commandments are those? What commandments does, does Jesus say in this, in this gospel of John? Well, it's not 23 different ones. It's not 173 different things. In fact, it is only one. A little bit later in this passage, after the part that we've read, it says, I command you to do one thing and one thing only, to love each other as I have loved you. Love each other as I have loved you. That is all that he's asked of them. That's what's going to help them move through. They're going to be in community in ways they never expected. So if they love him, then in fact, they should love each other. And that will be the continuation of what's going to happen. Then Jesus tells them the truth. He tells them the hard things that are to come. Look, I am not going to be here anymore. Physically, I'm going to be absent. But he says, I am not going to leave you alone. You're not going to be orphans, he says. In fact, you are going to be there's going to be a helper. There's going to be a comforter. There's going to be something stable for you to rely upon. So he tells them that something called the paraclete, 
That's what the Greek word that he uses, a, a paraclete is coming. And the paraclete is a comforter, is a, a helper is probably the best English word. Something that is going to be there for them. It's going to be the spirit, what we commonly call the Holy Spirit now. And you may recall if you're uh, older like I am, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, this is what's coming to be part of them. And there's going to be work for this Holy Spirit that's going to be beneficial to this community of disciples that is going to completely unleash God's love on the world. So this, this, this Holy Spirit, this Holy Spirit is going to teach them because they're going to continue to need to be taught. We all need to be taught. Even the best teachers among us need to be taught. And so they're going, as we open up scripture together, as they come together to, to have worship services after Jesus is gone, they're going to continue through the power of the Holy Spirit to, to lift up the words that Jesus says and the actions that he took and study them and study this, the, the, the Jewish scriptures. Not only will it teach, but it will also remind them, remind them of what it means to be a people who were loved by God and continue to love others. Remind them what that means. Remind them in the, remind them in the midst of everything. Like this tree reminds me to be rooted in things. Remind them in what it means to be a people who are loved by God and love others. He says that not only will they teach, will the Holy Spirit teach and remind you, but it will abide in you. It will, it will be part of you. This Holy Spirit will be part of you as you love each other, as you love others. This Holy Spirit will remind you, will, will uh, abide within you so that you can grow and be challenged and be uh, the, the kind of people that, that show that kind of love to the world. So the, Jesus, Jesus says that this is going to be a teacher. This is going to be a reminder. This is going to be someone who abides with you. And this is also going to be a testifying uh, spirit. This spirit is going to pull out of you testimony uh, that you don't even know now. Testimony that says what it is that you desire, that, that God has put into you, what love it is that you had that has come into this world. And it's also going to help you to hear the testimony of others. How has God changed other people in your community? Again, this is part of a community role of the Holy Spirit. Because you see, this is not things that are just for us, not just for our internal spirit. But in fact, this is things that bind a community together. Like, that, like the roots of this tree binding a community of trees together, the Holy Spirit is binding each of us who, if we love him and have kept his commandment to love one another, it's, it's a creation of the church. And, you know, if you think about it, the church itself, the church itself is created by the Holy Spirit. We're going to celebrate Pentecost in a couple of weeks. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at that time created the church that we know today. That church was created by a complete outpouring. It was testimony. It was people seeing that Peter, Peter was testifying. It was people being taught. It was people finding out that the that, uh, that, that Messiah had come and, and that there was a new way of seeing uh, the world in the light of the love uh, and the teachings of Jesus Christ. So there's a tremendous amount of things that this Holy Spirit is going to do to create this community that creates the church that we have inherited today. So, so what does that mean for us today? What could possibly could that be about us? In fact, what this says to us today is that our church was never about a building. Our church was never about an event. Our church was never about a particular person in a particular pew. This church was always about the power of the Spirit to lift up our gifts, to lift up our mission and ministry, to send us forth in love, to love one another. I have seen across our district the ways in which our churches have risen to the challenge of loving others as they have been loved by God. They have fed the tremendous number of people who are suddenly hungry. They have helped the people who are suddenly homeless. They have worked with the people who were finding themselves without jobs. They have called forth gifts they didn't even know they had to do technical things that have never been done before in the name of the church. The Holy Spirit is present and challenging us in the midst of this. The Holy Spirit is that powerful love. Because really, whose spirit is it? 
It's the spirit of Jesus left behind. It is all the love Jesus poured out, left behind and active constantly in the world. It is present here. It is present in this beautiful tree. It is present in, in those of you who are watching this morning. It is present in the life and the love and the movement forward of the church today in its mission to help others see and to help others know that the love of God is theirs. They are beloved as you are and there is work to be done. The Holy Spirit is a love connector. It is a love connection, connecting everyone and everything to each other. This is how God transforms the world through the power of this Holy Spirit. May your world be transformed. May you be challenged and pushed. May you ask yourself every day, how am I living out this love? How am I being challenged by this love? How is fear and the anxiety and the, the walls that I have put up in the midst of this scary time being broken down by love? How can I reach out to the next person in love? How can I support the work of my church and the mission of the church in the world with my love and my work in the Holy Spirit? I wish you great joy in the finding of that truth. I wish you great love connections for they will transform the world throughout eternity. Amen and amen. Thank you, Sarah. And now our hymn, The Gift of Love. and concerns to share uh, first from our youth. Uh, they want to remind us that it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Now, when I was a youth, mental health, how well this mental health, what, what was that? I wouldn't have even known. Now, I'm glad to, to know that they are telling us to uh, remember that this is to be aware of that. Uh, and in fact, a couple of them have asked for the prayers regarding their, um, their mental health. Uh, Grace says her cousin is home, recovering from uh, planned surgery, but in a lot of pain, so keep him in your prayers. Um, another youth is excited about growing an onion, I guess doing something different in, uh, in quarantine. Christina, our youth leader, graduated yesterday. Congratulations, Christina. Uh, and of course, to all of our, our grads. And uh, by the way, we, we Sorry, stick an announcement in here. Uh, we will be celebrating Education Sunday, and uh, our scholarship uh, program is open. So look on our website. Uh, there should be a link in the uh, weekly shout, too. We pray for uh, college, high school students who are taking AP tests this week and next. Uh, 
let's see oh for ken has who is undergoing hip surgery tomorrow keep him in your prayers he expects to be home tuesday his daughter is with him to care for him for the next few weeks katie's friend tyler has a baby goat that's sick oh no sorry to hear that and it's hard to get a vet to come when you know during a quarantine Jan F. asked for prayers for baby Lola, who's still having seizures and um, is undergoing care as the doctors try to figure out what's going on and how to bring God's healing. Uh, our Wednesday morning group also asked for prayers for our leaders as uh, they have wisdom and co common sense. And I would extend that not just our political leaders, but our church leaders as well as we try to find a, a safe way to navigate returning to, to what we were used to. Stephanie Marshall, uh, prayers for her sister-in-law. Also prayers for Moses' family, as several of them are dealing with uh, coronavirus. And um, Jan asked for prayers for her college roommate, Diane, who is uh, beginning her first of 30 chemo treatments. That will certainly be a long haul. And uh, keep her in your prayers as that gets arduous at times. Let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Norm? Loving Father, thank you for this day, a day we have not seen before and will not see again. Thank you for the gift of creation. May we, in this season of great pause, see with new eyes. Folks, I, I don't know what happened to the audio. Loving Father, Thank you for this day, a day we have not seen before and will not see again. Thank you for the gift of creation. May we, in this season of great pause, see with new eyes our Father's world. Let us savor the quiet and stillness that has come to be this season. Help us to hear afresh the sounds of birds chirping and streams gurgling. Guide us to embrace the silence and hear the gentle whispers to our souls. Thank you, Father, for the gift of Jesus Christ, who revealed to us your great love and compassion, who noticed the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized. We confess that there are times we have been blind to your children. In this season of Great Pause, guide us to where we do not just notice, but respond to the needs of those around us. Father, we cannot love as Christ loves on our own, no matter how hard we try. And so in our great wisdom, you have given us the Holy Spirit, a companion who is with us always, who dwells within us. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are grateful that we journey through this life. There is an advocate who gives us eyes to see and ears to hear how we can spread your love, how we can make your kingdom real and tangible here and now. We thank you for the promptings of the Holy Spirit that guide us to respond to our family, our friends, and our neighbors in love, grace, and mercy. We ask you this morning to pour out your grace upon us that we hear the words written so long ago, that we might hear them anew, that the Holy Spirit might move in each of us to be salt and light in this world, that the world might know Jesus through the love and mercy we show in our everyday, ordinary lives. We ask all this in the strong name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
worship and church and everything we understand about ourselves as a community has been changed and turned upside down. But the Holy Spirit is present here. The Holy Spirit is with us in the midst of this, teaching us new things, reminding us of the ways we may have done things in ancient history and the way we might do things from now to 100 years into the future. As we prioritize, reprioritize everything, as we take a new look at the gifts that God has given us, we find new ways of prioritizing, new ways of thinking about things. I've discovered, for example, that while my budget for gas has gone incredibly down, my budget for DoorDash has become exponential. So all things are being re-examined in this new and strange time. Your church is doing things in new ways that you might not understand either. The pastors have been asked to do incredible things of reimagining worship that no one's ever done before. The teams that work at your church, the laity and the technical and the staffing, licensing, copyrights, there's all sorts of new things that are being thrown at us. And in the midst of all this, your church continues to have ongoing needs. I hope that you can be a part of continuing the mission of your church. And I've seen the ways across this district that many of our churches have done that. I've seen people continuing to feed the hungry and the number of hungry have grown exponentially. I've seen people helping the homeless and again, they are also growing exponentially. I've seen people helping the, those who have suddenly lost their jobs and are completely disoriented in their lives. You have been in mission and ministry in new and different ways, all from a social distance and with practicing good sanitation, but all rethought and reimagined for a new kind of world. If you can continue to help support the mission of your church, now is the time to do that. Your church will let you know how you can do that for everything from an old fashioned mail in an envelope to a new and different uh, e-transition e uh, to ways in which your church knows that you can financially support them. Buy into the mission of this local church because it is important because the church now must step up and be fearless in a time of great fear. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can all be a continue to be a part of that mission. Sorry about that in the prayers. My I lost the audio and it was turned out it was a, it was my battery on my earpiece. <laughs> anyway. Um, certainly we continue to, 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 to function as a church. Uh, push pay if you want to give electronically is, is one way to do that. You can find those details on our website. Uh, also in various emails that we've sent out. Uh, of course, you can mail a check in. It takes a little bit longer for us to process, so don't panic if it doesn't get put in the bank right away. But uh, those are moving along. And we thank you, who, th those who have been supporting, as we continue to be in mission, as we, we continue to, to feed hungry people, to care for one another, and, and to look forward to the future when we can be together again. So let us pray. Oh, loving God, we give you thanks that you have placed in the hearts of your faithful people the gift of generosity and the desire to keep your commands. Bless the gifts that we have received. Bless the tithes and offerings. And use them to reveal to all tribes, nations, and peoples your love in Jesus Christ. Amen. And now our closing hymn is because he lives.
Thanks, everybody. And again, the, uh, we invite you to stick with us and uh, on Zoom and join us in some virtual coffee hour. As we conclude this time of worship together, may the Holy Spirit irritate you, challenge you, push you, send you into places and ways of being that you never imagined. As we end a time of worship, we don't really end it, do we? We continue it in the world. We take it out into the world, sometimes only as far as the, the tree down the street from us, but we take the love, that love connection, back out into the world because we're there to share it. So go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, knowing that you, beloved, carry the love connection with you. Amen.